What's going on all of you fantastic freelancers? My name is William and today we're going to be discussing the Javelin customization dev stream from last week, or at least an aspect of it that has me a little concerned. As many of you know by now, I am a cosmetic sucker, and I'll be spending large portions of my Anthem playthrough time customizing my Javelin because, well, I want to look my best so I can play my best. A card will appear that will take you to the highlights video we did for that stream. Obviously, I was in shock and awe, like many of you freelancers, when I first saw the stream and I was continually impressed as I went back and edited and watched the stream over and over again. However, I would be remiss not to bring up something that has me fairly concerned right now. Not necessarily a, oh my god, red flags, red flares, but concerned about how this system will be implemented. Something Ben Irving said a few times during the stream was that we were not witnessing everything the Forge has to offer, which is definitely indicative of even more vinyls, skins, textures, and other goodies we can use to customize our javelins. And that's all fine and well. It's the part where Ben mentions how you will unlock these items that, like I said, doesn't shoot up red flags or red flares, but makes me raise an eyebrow a little bit. Now, we have known for a while that Anthem would have microtransactions, but you would know what you were paying for, i.e. no loot boxes, the items would be direct purchasable, they would be strictly cosmetic, and you could earn them through regular progression and gameplay. I've never had a problem with that, and without paid DLC or having Anthem release at a higher price tag, it's these cosmetics that will fund Anthem's live service for years to come. And I'm totally on board and fine with that. But when you have a system that is this vast and in-depth with more choices and options than anything we've seen in any other modern day game of this genre, aside from Warframe of course, it does raise a few points. There is a business theory and a psychological study being developed in the video game marketing world right now that kind of applies to the Anthem in-game market system a fair bit. Essentially, it references the time value theory, i.e. how long are you willing to work slash grind for this cosmetic before you say screw it and just purchase it. Is the time that you spend grinding for this item, worth the value of how you would look with it, or would it be cheaper to spend premium currency on it and save you that incredibly long grind while preserving the cosmetics worth? So let me back up for a second and break it down a little bit more. I applaud Anthem and the team for allowing us to earn these cosmetics in-game without the need to purchase them directly if we don't want to. It prevents the EA loot box argument, it prevents critics from complaining about premium currency exclusive items, and like I said before, it'll fund Anthem's live service for years to come, allowing them to release new content cosmetics, story, features, and so on. However, there are things that they could do or tactics they could employ to make it more appealing to buy the cosmetics from the store as opposed to grinding them out. So let's say there is a 1 in 10 chance of you finding or getting the incredibly epic scale cosmetic for your suit. An image of the scale armor will appear on screen right now. You could either grind it out or you could say pay $3.99 for the cosmetic. Personally, I would grind it out and save myself the $3.99. However, what if it was more of a 1 in 100 or 1 in 1,000 chance of getting it, which would result in me grinding for hours if not days to find it. I really want that scale armor for my Pyrostorm, and while I am by no means opposed to the grind, I'd rather not lose days grinding it out when I could be doing something else that would benefit my power as opposed to my vanity. With me wanting to look my best so I can play my best as soon as possible, and given the possible hours if not days of grinding, I might just value my time that I could be doing something else more and say screw it. I'll spend the $3.99. The other side of that is we don't know how the in-game cosmetic store will charge us yet. It could be something as minor as a flat dollar or two rate, or a rate based on the rarity of the cosmetic. A dollar for common, two for uncommon, and up and up it goes until we're paying $10 to $20 for a single legendary item. Will a customization system with as much unlockable variety as Anthem will obviously have be worth spending thousands of hours just to unlock everything for us cosmetic suckers and completionists, or would it just be easier to give in and pay up? Personally, I think it'll be worth every ounce of the grind, and especially if the dev stream is even remotely indicative of how absolutely incredible Anthem's customization system will look. I doubt we will need to brace ourselves for the worst, or for manipulative practices with Anthem's in-game store. I have unparalleled faith in our developers. They have been so transparent with us on literally everything, and on every level. A few critics have pointed out, though, if they are so transparent, then why haven't they shown us the in-game store yet, or at least shared some sort of details? I I personally don't believe it's a matter of them hiding anything from us or keeping information from us that may turn us off of Anthem. It is still in development, and just like everything else, when the time is right, they will undoubtedly share everything as transparently as they have with every other aspect of Anthem. Now, with all of this in mind, what are your thoughts on the in-game store and the possibilities of the unlockables for Anthem's customization system? Leave a comment below or join us in our Discord to discuss this topic and continue the conversation further. And if you enjoyed this video, consider leaving 
a like and subscribing for more content on your game, Anthem. As always, a huge thank you to my patrons for their generous donations and support of the channel. I hope all of you fantastic freelancers have a phenomenal day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next video very soon. Peace out, everyone.